Hello and welcome to Whisky Podcast number nine, August edition, being uploaded in October. I'm sure my co-host will have many excuses relating to Dram Team release and things like that, but I'm known more for my honesty than he is, as I'm not a Laura. Um, and it's basically, we've been busy and tired, and mainly tired, uh, and we've only just got around to tasting these. They've been sat waiting for us to try them for a while. It also didn't help that we went to the uh, Bristol Whiskey Underground, and I haven't been able to drink whiskey for quite a while after that. Uh, we I had have... a bill for a month. I may have overindulged slightly and uh, it's only recently that I've got back to actually being able to taste it without feeling a little bit sick. Yeah, um, so we'll see how this goes with... Yes! Yes! This will yeah. be the first first decent batch that I've drunk in a while, so we if you hear retro noises, you know why. And that's not against the whiskies. Yeah. It might be, but it might not be. It's not guaranteed that it is. Yeah. Okay, so, so I will hand over to, to you then to uh, to do the first whiskey. Yeah, uh, I, I, I was going to say it's uh, the it's because of the unfortunate delays due to bottling backlog, uh, the dram team that have caused us to have months a month off of uh, getting a box. But we didn't upload the last podcast either because uh, our side hustle, which pays our wages, um, yeah. has yes. been getting in the way. Um, the box this month is uh, hidden gems, so. They say uh, we've hunted out a set of well-kept whiskey secrets for this box, showcasing drams from Scotland and beyond that. For one reason uh, and beyond that, and beyond that, for one reason or another, are little known, but all highly deserving of some spotlight. Cheers. And Sanj. cheers to, is it Chris from the dram team that we met? It is Chris from the dram team that we met. Um, uh, whoever uh, remembers us, we were all very well, drunk. We barely remember. I remembered yeah. what he told us. Yeah, that we were going to be late on the box. Yeah. Um, it obviously impacted you deeply whilst you still thought you could drink more whiskey. Yeah, I can't remember what I did after that. Probably remembered to pick up the whiskey that you bought and then... Uh, yeah, I was very impressed with myself. For fell asleep to get that back. Yeah, yes, yes. I remember, I remember that. Yeah. I still but don't you... remember getting in a taxi, though. No. But we were definitely, uh, we paced ourselves. It was just that we had to pace ourselves really quickly because we only had a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't think we paced ourselves. Uh, I'm just saying we did and we set a really fast pace. I think we just drank. Yeah. I and think then, we started off asking questions and being conversationalists. But yeah, yeah I, I think that wasn't problem. what I was aiming for, but conversationalists will do. And then as the timeline got shorter and shorter the speaking reduced and the drinking increased yeah i think the problem with with drinking a lot of whiskey is you don't realize how drunk you are until you're until too it's drunk. too late and then you're like i am very drunk i will stop now and then you continue to get drunker as your body processes it into your bloodstream yeah so we have a backlog much like the dram team's bottles yeah it caught up but it was a very good day we'll talk about it more as i, I dare say as we go through but let's yes. get some whiskeys drank okay so first up, uh, we have a Boutique Whiskey Co. Strathmill Batch 5, aged 11 years. So the card here says uh, Strathmill is owned by drinks giant Diageo. Diageo? Diageo? Yeah. Mm. And the vast majority of the distillery's output goes into the J&B Rare blend. That's a bit so, ironic then. What's that? Well, if the vast majority of the output goes into a rare blend, it ain't that rare. Yeah, true. And so, it's not often seen as a single malt. Luckily for us, Indie Bottle or Boutique have managed to sneak out a few batches. This expression lets Strathmill's light, fruity spirit style speak for itself. So, on first impressions, this is a very, very clear whiskey. Like, I can't... The light in my room is a little bit yellow. Be careful with, with that. I just gave it a sniff and it really cleared out my sinuses. Yeah. Well, huh. Whoa, that is... As a smell, it, it actually has like a slightly cidery smell. Like, yeah, yeah, it is like a like a very strong cider, like a Calvados almost. Yeah, um, and so I know we'll that's an apple what, brandy and not a cider, but what's the really what's the difference? That's what a strong cider would be, isn't it? Yeah, but um, we'll say 
So the nose here says golden syrup and honey. A touch of charred oak lingers in the background. I'm not getting golden get syrup. Honey. Yeah, it's, it's quite sweet. Yeah. It's quite a sweet smell. Yeah, I can get that. It's quite a light, high smell. <coughs> Christ. I've got a bit of a cold still, and that just went straight through it. There you go. That's what whiskey's good for. It's good for it's everything. Got, it's got quite fast legs, this one. Fast legs. It's a bit of a sprinter, is it? Yeah. It doesn't pace itself either. So, have you had a taste? I have not. What should I expect? Are you wanting to hear first? Yeah, go on. Tell me what I'm meant so, to be drinking as I drink it. Soft anise and cinnamon, so spice. Followed by juicy citrus and a good whack of vin- vanilla rich malt. Moving to a finish of fruity esters and a touch of caramel. So, here we go. so I get the malt about 60% of the way through. It does start off quite light. Yeah, maybe maybe anise. A bit spicy, but not very. Soft, yeah, those. Not very... sure I get citrus. No, I do I'm get the malt. I do get the malt. The sort of vanilla uh, carameliness is coming through. Maybe I've just, uh, still got some more to drink, so have another go. Yeah. So I get fruitiness. Then it builds into the malt. And then the finish comes through quite warm and fairly lingering. Mm. I can feel it between my shoulder blades. Um, I would say that the spice is sort of through it rather than yeah it's not a hit of spice no. it's fairly mild no that's quite nice that i like that yeah very warming yeah it's what, what was the strength on this one oh 50. uh, 51.1 so that sort of explains that a little. that would explain it yeah yep uh any other comments on it well i got a bit of fruit that time yeah i just uh, did the last little drop from my glass and it was it sort of... Definitely got legs because, like, I can see it now down the side of my glass. Yeah. Um. So I, I definitely got fruit to begin. I'm just typing up That's our fine. notes. Fruit to begin. Um, building into a maltiness. Yep. Uh, light, light spice. spice and caramel flavors throughout. Probably. Caramel flavors. Lingering, warming finish. Surprising array of uh, flavors for something that seems so clear. Usually, the mm. in my experience, the more it's very dark. clear for an eleven-year-old as well. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't say anything about how it was matured, but I imagine as it's gone into, it, it primarily goes into a blend. They're not trying to get a look from it. They'll just... Well, it's, it's got to be a bourbon cask to be that light. Yeah. But even even a bourbon cask puts a bit of color on it. Could be. Virgin oak. But could be virgin oak. Yeah, could be. Probably not. Okay, what would you give that one then? It's been a while. I'm going to have to try and recalibrate, but... Mm. I'd say it was a solid three. Mm. Agreed. It's, it doesn't really hit any of my preferred boxes, but it doesn't hit anything that I dislike either. So it's just a nice whiskey... You could drink it, but you probably wouldn't sit there being like, oh, I really need to get... I'd have one. Yeah. You would be like, oh, that was good. I'm actually yeah, going to have another. If you were in a whiskey one. bar and you had the whole array, that one wouldn't make you think twice about getting a second of the same one. No, you wouldn't regret getting it, but you wouldn't want another. Yes. Which, to be fair, you have to be something special if you're in a, if I'm in a whiskey bar and I'm thinking... Oh, instead of trying another whiskey, I'll go back to this one that I've yeah. already had. Yeah, I'll spend another five pound on one that I've already tasted. I mean, I don't think I double went for any whiskies at the uh, underground whiskey underground festival, but uh, uh, I, I couldn't be hundred percent on that. It'd be very strange if you did, because why would we were, you? Yeah, we were trying to fire through. I just did a hand motion for that. So, uh, what, you what motion did you do? A sort of uh, um, chop, right? Uh, like three like chops forward, yeah, yeah, yeah. One. yeah, yeah. Hate those little bastards, yeah, yeah. Um, that's uh, a reference to our friend who, who hates small people, yeah. 
there's a book about that. And the trailer. Yeah. And maybe one day a series. If we ever get a Hollywood behind us. Yeah. Just scared. Scared of our imagination. Scared of our brilliance. Yeah, exactly. As you can tell by the way that this... It's, I, I think we're getting oppressed by China, that's what it is. It's us and Boris Johnson. What? Well, he released did, a film script, didn't he? Did he? Yeah, he sent a film script out, apparently. Is that what he did? It? About the war in Iraq or something like that. Oh, right. Excellent. And, I mean, uh, he was a journalist, so I suppose. Yeah, why not? But yeah, we... Uh, as I say, I think we're being uh, suppressed by the the Chinese government. So I don't think that's true. I I love our friends in China. Oh, I mean, I also love uh, Chinese uh, <laughs> dictatorships. Um, not dictatorships. Uh, the, I, I love the Communist Party of China, and I think that it is great that they get to dictate what goes into the media in the West. Yeah. And I also, they make really nice dumplings. Putting Trey Parker and Matt Stone. They, they make, make really nice dumplings as well. They do. And chow mein is a staple of my diet. Because, you know, it's got vegetables. It's got... Mine has beef. It's got noodles. It's balanced. It's balanced. <laughs> what more can you ask for? All right. Next whiskey? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So this is a Berry Bros and Rudd. We've got a bit of a checkered past. Uh, it's a Glen Lossy, nine years old. And the description goes as such. Like Straff Milk, whiskey from Glen Lossy Distillery is highly sought after for blending and is consequently extremely rare to find as a single malt. This bottling by Britain's oldest independent bottler was distilled in 2007 and bottled in 2017 from an ex-bourbon cask. Bourbon, sorry. I always say bourbon. Bourbon cask. Biscuits on the brain. Uh, yeah, well, it's better than, bo- better than bourbon. Bourbon's yeah. better than bourbon. I have had some good bourbons recently, but... Yeah. I'd still have <laughs> From the yeah, next bourbon cask, really allowing the delicate floral grassiness of the Glen Lossy spirit to shine. So do you think that uh, it's rarer to get a Glen Lossy nine-year-old from Very Bros and Rudd than it is to get a J&B Rare Blend? <laughs> I don't know, because one, one of them has got rare in the title. Exactly. So, no. I'm only having tasters. I still cannot stomach... What? Full whiskies. Five and a half full whiskies, yeah. I just can't it. do it. I just can't do it. I could probably do it, but I've got a retirement due tomorrow, which starts with a curry for an hour and a half and then goes on to the pub, so I'm probably not wanting to be... Yeah. I can't I can't remember how long it took me after the Stramash, but I don't think it took me this long. Mm. Yeah, well... I don't think I got as drunk as the Stramash, though. I think we... No, because we definitely stayed awake till, like... Yeah, we, we didn't get back at 6pm and then go to bed. No. <laughs> and then wake up at 3am and kind of meet each other in the kitchen and kind of go, eh. Yeah, somehow on the same uh, uh, exact schedule. Of... <laughs> just kind of walked into the kitchen and went, oh. you're right. And then yeah. went back to bed both of us because we're just not all right. <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, I'm all right. I'm not dead. But... Yeah, <laughs> I'll see you in a few hours. Yeah, It was, yeah. Yeah, I had a, I had a glass of milk to settle my stomach, and then immediately threw it up. I didn't throw mine up. But I meat. did eat the the uh, heel of the bread with some Nutella. I didn't toast it. Yeah, I, must I didn't admit, trust I, I myself just, to operate a toaster. I had a I glass just, of milk and was like, "That was a mistake." Yeah, I just buttered the, the bread and was like, "Let's sleep." Okay, so on the nose gives an impression of dusty jute sacks in a spice warehouse. There is a fruity, honeyed dimension, a fifth dimension. What is a jute sack? It's like a oh, hessian good. sack. All right, cool. Could just say hessian, though. No? I think jute is different. It's a different material, but it's basically like that. Okay. Um, palate is playful with a creamy texture as a fruit and spice intermingle. The spice seems to have the last say. They were very poetic with this one, Jesus. It's Finished. Sort of. Sorry, the it finish does, has a gentle, lingering quality. You will be sorry. Don't you speak of me when I'm reading the card. It sort of does smell... Like a sack. Like a like a warehouse full of aromatics. I get like a bit of a... Like a warty smell. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that probably also is in... That's definitely in there. Mm. Like it smells... 
Closer to a new make than a whiskey. Yeah. Mm. yeah speaking yeah. of, I've got to go pick up a new make tomorrow. It also looks closer to a new make than most whiskies, to be honest. But it does. again, this is probably these uh, the ones that are going in for a blend. They're not really bothered about the coloration of it. So yeah, it does. So I'll let you have a taste. Do you get playful with a creamy texture as the fruit and spice intermingle and the spice seeming to have the last say? Is that how you would describe the flavors you get? I don't know about playful. It kind of punched me in the throat, but uh, punched you in the throat. Yeah, I, I think I swallowed a bit quickly. Mm. Um, but it's creamy, and there is a sort of subtle spice. I don't have the fruit yet, but no, I get. It does say that the spice will have the last say. So I get creamy to begin, then the spice overtakes. Not in like a harsh way. It's just a mild spice that just lingers for a long time. Sort of like a lightly spiced cream really yeah 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 yes like a christmas cream or something it's fairly fairly harmless it's not bad yeah it's it doesn't it doesn't taste a lot like a whiskey Mm. no agreed and i think the smell works against it Mm. i don't think it's a good nose that one no it again it's a bot. It's not. It wasn't designed to be bottled. Mm. It's just chosen to be bottled. I'm not against it. I sort of I quite enjoy it, but I, it, it's not what you're expecting. You know what they feel? These first two what? incomplete. Yeah, they're definitely parts of a whole. Yeah, Which makes sense being that they're. Yeah. Okay, so for the notes for this one, um, creamy. With a mild spiciness developing to dominance. Long live China. Um, they have lived uh, quite long. Spice, yeah, continues throughout the medium finish. I would give that one. I didn't like that one as much, so I'm going to go two and a half on that one. Yeah, I'm yeah. probably. About the same. Kidoki. It's not offensive, but no, it's not. I probably would feel slightly cheated if I paid five pounds for it. Yeah, after the ones we've tried. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, I've got a new make to pick up tomorrow. See, if you pay for a new make, you expect it to be in these kinds of regions, but. Well, I mean, it's that one. You know, I signed up to join that distillery. Yeah. Cooper King Distillery in Yorkshire. Yep. Yeah, they've sent through my new make. That was one of the things I got for joining. It's good. So is it at the post office, then? Yeah, I'll just get the bus through and pick it up. Um, yeah, I mean, recently I've done two more distillery tours. Um did I talk about the Yorkshire? Had I done the Yorkshire distillery by the time? No, because it was in like August, wasn't it? I think so. So I did the Yorkshire distillery back in end of August for my birthday. Yeah. Um, that was very typically Yorkshire. It was like in an industrial estate. Uh, it's a hard like, whiskey. Well, every single distillery we've been to is usually surrounded by like grounds and looks very nice. Yeah. This one was just in a to be fair, uh, I think the ones that, because it's it's, an, it's a tourism industry in Scotland, yeah. I think generally the ones that are more factory-esque are less mm. open mm. because they just can't compete, so why would they bother? But to be fair, they did a lovely lunch. Like, the, the cafe's fantastic. Yeah. And you sit in it, and it's got, like, a little bit of a glass wall where you can see through to the distillery bit, and it's tiny. A tiny yeah. little distillery. But they do some interesting things, some exciting things, because they've got a column still. So they've got two pot stills, as you'd expect. But they've got a column still as well. And they're the only ones I've known who've done a whiskey that... Oh, they haven't done a whiskey yet, because it's not old enough, but has done a, a blend of column still and pot still whiskey. Mm. Yeah. And it's interesting. It's very nice. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing their first whiskey should be out any time now, really. 
good. Yeah, so I bought a bottle of that maturing malt, that 006, which you've tried. Yeah, which is very nice. Um, and then more recently, I was in the Lake District, so I went to the Lakes Distillery. Yep. And that is very much like the Classic. Scottish ones. It's yeah. it's you know, picturesque. It's, yeah, it's picturesque. It's like it's done up beautifully. They've got a video. Oh, to be fair, the York Distillery had a video, but you know they've got this really cool video film from a helicopter and. Uh, yeah, it was it was very nice. Um, I managed to persuade my mum. So she was there at the auction still and wouldn't try any whiskey. And I was like, you've got to try at least one. So she took a whiskey and she gave it a smell and she made this awful face and then she wouldn't drink it. <laughs> uh, and some guy in the gift shop was laughing at her. <laughs> you got her halfway. Yeah. Next time. Yeah. And then she remembered that she liked vodka from <laughs> before she was married to my dad. So you're talking like 30 odd nearly 40 years yeah and uh she tried a bit of vodka and she hated that as well what does she drink now gin no she don't like gin either um, wine. yeah she's all right on wine um but she likes ginger beer oh yeah so an alcoholic ginger beer I imagine. not an alcoholic ginger beer no, just no. ginger beer fentleman's ginger beer right. well you could make a cocktail with that yeah that's just what she likes so it's just like oh but yeah, no. Um, I, I enjoyed both uh, both tours. The auction one was was very down to earth. Uh, the only problem with the lakes one, I couldn't give it a fair review because they had a problem in the kitchen, so they weren't doing lunches. And I think that's a key part of a good distillery visit is a good lunch. Yeah, they did nice cake. I'll give them that. I had a piece of cake from there because they had some cakes still, and that was very nice. Was it so a I, donut? Uh, no. <laughs> To be fair, I think out of all the distillery tours we've done, the the two that are up top for me are Abelauer and Clydeside. Really? Yeah. I suppose we didn't tour Glenfiddich. We just got really drunk and ate some nice food. So. It spent 60 quid on whiskey, and about whiskey 20 quid on for food. lunch. Yeah. No, Glenfiddich had the probably the nicest cafe. Yeah. But in terms of distillery tours... Abelauer is great because it's just a really classic distillery tour. It's like this is a distillery that's older than dirt. Yeah. We still do everything basically the old way. They've got that mill that they've been running for like 80 years or some nonsense. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's as pretty, it should be. Yeah. And then Clydeside. Modern. But like modern still in charming. a good way. It was really It was really clever how they did the tour. Yeah. Like those two rooms that you got to explore on your own pace. Yeah. And then, all of that. Yeah. And the, I mean, the, the, the still room is fantastic, isn't it? That glass room yeah, off the river. To get Clyde, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I must admit, the Clyde side I was very impressed by. Because especially when they haven't got their own whiskey yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Shouldn't be long now. But... No. Uh, and those chocolates were fantastic as well, to be fair. They were pretty good. Shout so... out the person who makes them, who we don't have a name for, but they're. A local chocolatier. Yeah, and the dis- yeah, and the donut was was pretty special. Yeah, it was something else. Yeah. Okay, right. I guess we go on to the next one. We've yeah, had I'm a... spying time because it's still making a little bit nauseous, so I've just yeah. pasted. Well, next up we've got the uh, High Coast Have Oak Spice. So I think the brand is High Coast, and then the whiskey is called Have, and then the sub... This is going to be smoky. Yeah, it'll probably be. So we've got High Coast Distillery. It's tucked away in Sweden, where the river, I'm not saying it, no, uh, Anger Manolin merges into the Have or Sea to you and me. So it's probably going to be salty. Outside Scotland, there is no restriction on disclosing details of your whiskey, and High Coast embraces transparency with gusto. Yeah. Have consists of 76.82% unpeated whiskey and 23.18% peated. 66.85% is matured for up to five months in the small casks of Hungarian and Swedish oak, then bourbon barrels for an average of 6.09 years. I mean, they've been very, very precise. That's a good average, isn't it? Yeah. Two decimal places. Yeah. 30, yeah, you, if you're just averaging, you'd normally say 6.1 there, but sure. Then uh, 30.84% matures solely in bourbon barrels and 2.67% C, apparently, uh, typo, sorry, is finished in Hungarian oak. Whew. It also tastes rather lovely. So have you had a chance to sniff this one yet? Yeah, do you not hear the noise I made? I thought that was just you sniffing. 
No, I sniffed and then they went. (laughs) Fruity, spicy, cloves, light peak, reek, and nutmeg. No. 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 There's no fruity. There's spicy. There's a bit of cloves and there's peat. There's no fruit in that in that smell. There's no. I, I, I dare anyone to say that there's fruit in that that smell. It's not that peaty. It is pretty peaty. It's not. It's not medicinal kind of peaty, but it's peaty. Ah, oh, God. Right. Well. What are we meant to be tasting? Well balanced, fruity, spicy, peat aroma with a finish of oak, cloves, and vanilla. Here we go. Oof. Yeah. Balanced. Yeah. The, the peat is built. smokier rather than. Yeah. You know, that rubber sort of peat. That this little. Yeah. But... It's the little peat I don't like, the really light peat. Yeah. I can get the cloves. Uh, a bit spicy. Yeah, a little bit spicy. I can get where they're getting well balanced from. If you if you're stronger yeah. on your peated whiskey than I am, you'd probably say that was pretty well balanced. Yeah. I still don't get fruity from it. It's probably in there somewhere, but let's get quite a woodiness. Yeah, that'll be the oak, I imagine. <laughs> but, yeah, probably. Uh, it did say. Yeah. Uh, but I uh, yeah I think I think if we add more trained palates in the world of peat we might be able to get the fruit there's something there but i can't really override the yeah i can't get through the peat yeah and for those of you who are big peat fans that's not to say this is very peaty it's just the flavor makes it difficult to identify the more subtle flavors underneath but yeah there's a bit of spiciness to it there's uh, in the end there is some vanilla when it dies down well, so the, the notes I've taken for this one, I've put closed on nose and throughout taste, light, medium, peat throughout, oakiness pervades. Yep. Anything you'd like to add to that? Um, no, that probably works fine for me. And what will you be giving that one then? I'll tell you what score I've given it in a minute. I'll go again for a three, I think. Quite a three? Like. Oh. It was it's gentle kind of enough and uh, it's quite creamy, actually. Yeah, okay. I'll put that in, yeah. Thing. And I quite I quite like that in a sort of whiskey like that. We've, we've deviated for once. I've gone oh, quite low. I, I was imagining you would. I've given it a one and a half. You're probably going to go quite low again as well. Yeah, I know. It's just it's not it's it's nothing against whiskies. It's not bad whiskies. It's just a I fact. think I'm in I'm in a bad state at the moment for whiskey still. And then this is just the kind of whiskey I don't like. Uh. Yeah, I think two of the next three are probably not going to be excellent for you. But... No, I'm not looking forward to one called Pete Hart, I've got to admit. Oh, you can tell us all about it. If you... Hooray. Thank you for that. Yeah. Sure, go. Share the love. And then there's that one that they've ruined the Pinot Noir cask one by peating it. I'm sure it'll be nice, though. Bastards. Just oh. cleansing my palate. Yes. Yeah. Get rid I of also, all that smoke for all this smoke. Yeah. I also did a brewery tour in the lakes. Yeah. What, did... was, what was the brewery? Jennings. All right. What 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 is their uh, flagship? Uh. I knew the answer to this, and it's completely Cumberland. All right. I don't think I've had it. But... It's all right. It's not bad. It... I'm not a big fan of British beers, you know, I'm not huge into it. I don't mind it. I'm a pretty, I like a decent ale. But, um, no, it was a really good tour. I enjoyed that. Uh, you got halves at the end instead of tasters, which was pretty cool. So I had half of all they had to offer. That's pretty cool. So I ended up having like two and a half, three pints, something like that. It's not bad. It's a bit difficult, though, because like you can go through five tastings of whiskey in like 20 minutes, or if you're at a whiskey festival, five minutes. Yeah. Um, but five halves takes a while. Start to get a bit full. I've had the Jennings IPA. I've just went on the website, the Atomic Theory one. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Um, 
No, I, I, I'd, I'd recommend that as well. I recommend anything like a brewery tour, a distillery tour, or whatever. Especially if you like if it adds a booze. Well, I can say if you like that kind of booze, go for it because yeah. generally the people who do it like it as well. So if you've got a bit of interest in it, you've got a shared interest to chat about and you can have a laugh. And... When, when we eventually go to Isla, I've been told uh, that um, <laughs> uh, one of the distilleries has an option to just do a, a gin tasting. So you can do that instead of getting. Screw tea. you. <laughs> I'll get, I'm kidding I'll get as well. Piece. Do you I'll know what the worst bit is? Back. What? Guess what uh, the story is that does a gin taste in? Is it Lafrig? No. Lagavulin? No. Nope. Brook Laddick? No. Nope. Uh, maybe. Is Brook Laddick the one that's unpeated? Because it's that one. No, it, that's. Uh, yeah, it's. I can't even remember. Begins with a B. Yeah. And a Brook Laddick. No, I don't think it is, though. Well, uh, we're showing our uh, inexperience or our uh, rustiness is more. Yeah, rustiness. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got, yeah. we've got Rusty. I wouldn't be guessing. No, it's Boone Harbin. Boone That's Harbin. Yeah. Boone That's Harbin, I think, is the one that does the uh, the gin tour. I'm, seeing, I'm not 100, but... We yeah. do need to actually actually go there at some point. Yeah, I would suggest we leave it till at least spring from now. Yeah, I, I can't go now. <laughs> it's also going to be very wet for the next six months. And... Part of the joy, I think, is being able to walk about the island, and I don't know if that's a an option during winter. <laughs> we could do it like we did walking up to Dallas Do. Yeah, get absolutely soaked with a damaged knee. Sounds great fun. My knee was fine. <laughs> yeah. but, we could do the ultimate Boona Harbin tour. What's that? It's a £250 pound tour. To you give you, like, you know... A 25 year old, 46 year old, 40 year old. Oh, I'm, those no, are some pretty I'm, not, I'm none of those ages. How old are you? 3 0. Oh, so in 10 years, we can do it. I'm sure that those whiskies will then be 10 years older as well. No, but you'll be a 40 year old, so you can do it then. Is that you've got to the be 25, 46, 40. You've got to be called Canasta. I can probably get a name change. I'm sure, a bad guy on James Bond was called Canasta. Is it not a card game? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> James Bond villains don't have particularly imaginative names, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, the guy called Goldfinger, his first name is Auric, and that just means gold or nice. golden. Because I... AU is gold, isn't it? Yeah. I don't I, see I all about a gin. They were all called, but... Maybe it's not there. Maybe it is one of the pity ones. Could be Brook Laddick. Probably drinking when uh, someone told me about this. So... Yeah. Yeah, probably. Do you want to? Should we talk about the whiskey underground thing? I mean, we've mentioned a bit of it. It was quite cool. It's uh, sort of in the what's the place called? It's next to the station in Bristol, anyway. Next to Temple Meads. Um, yeah. I, uh, it's basically in a bunch of uh, like old train uh, arches. Yeah. Um, underground. At least it feels that way. It's not. It's under the level of the station, but it's not underground. And uh, it, um, yeah, there was plenty of tables there. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head now, but uh, it was oh, a we, while ago. We did get very drunk. There was yeah. some Indian whiskey there, some Swedish whiskey. Yeah, tried the McMirrors. Yeah. Um, there was a cocktail guy who helped. Consistently had a queue, so we never actually got a cocktail. Which we were we had to get from... some nice people in the queue, though. They were nice when to we you. Tried, tried to push in front of me. Yeah. But yeah, it was, I, that was from... we didn't we didn't mean to push in front of them. No, we were just uh, drunk. Yeah. We spoke to uh, the um, whiskey blogger who does better than us. Uh, what's it called? Doesn't narrow amateur, it down too much, does it? Amateur whiskey guy or something. Find it just now, but yeah. Um, all in all, it was pretty good. Uh, the hot dog was a highlight <laughs> on top of all the whiskey, obviously. But it was very good, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, are you ready to go for the next uh whiskey or do we need to fill some more? Air? Yeah, no, let's go for Pete Hart. Why not? Yeah, why the hell not? Try to get these out of the way so we can get to the uh. 
the, the six gram that you might actually enjoy. Uh, this is not going to be fun. This is not going to be fun. It's probably just, like, if I look at the card, it's probably just Pete in size 72 font. <laughs> okay. Sideways. Yeah. It's and, the Whiskey Novice, by the way, is the guy that we... Uh, Anne Canock. Pete Hart, batch one. In a change from Anne Knock's regular non petered programming, why would you... Pete Hart celebrates the role of Pete in traditional Highland whiskey making. With the barley peated to a phenol content, a chemical measure of petedness, of 40 parts per million. It's anoc, by the way. 40 ppm is not... It's actually pretty high. An initial like... smoky burst surrenders to a surge of fruitiness. Ripe pears and the citrus notes of apples and limes with just a touch of tobacco in the background. The nose is balanced, yet an undeniable smoky sweetness, sweetness prevails. That's the nose. The palate is smoke laced with leather and sweet stewed apples. Chocolate is there too, perfectly complemented by sweet vanilla and zesty lemon. Right, this smoke laced with leather might be all right if it's mixed with chocolate. And then the finish is a lingering warmth with a floral smokiness. This sounds like hell. This is what Satan drinks. Ah, Christ. It definitely has an initial smoky burst. What, on the nose? Yeah. An initial. There is some sort of fruit notes after you let the smoke <laughs> go away. I don't want to drink this. <laughs> I've got to psych myself up. It's like doing a heavy lift. I wouldn't know, but it's from what I've seen, it's like doing a heavy lift. You've got to psych yourself up. got to put yourself into a... I'm doing that thing. To, to lift a car off my child, I've got to drink this. It's another creamy one, to be fair. Oh, really? Well, it's this man who can drink whiskey. <laughs> Thinks he's so good. And it definitely ends chocolate. It's not... My mouth might just be numb from the peak from before, but... Uh... It's not that smoky. It does taste a bit like a couch. <laughs> Thanks. You're, you're... Right, here we go. That was a joke, by the way. I'm just being quiet to hear you. Uh, Yeah, I mean, there's not... Wait, I can't speak, because it's just making it smokier. It's not too bad. It's not... It's not too bad. There's not a lot of flavour to begin with. Light spiciness. Yeah. Then the the smoke comes in. But I wouldn't say it was peaty smoke. It's a deeper smoke. Yeah. Peaty smoke is more heavy and floral. That's what yeah. I'm getting towards the end. Mm. Mid to... Yeah, I get that leathery kind of that bass note. Yeah, you know what I mean? It tastes yeah. a bit like a couch. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I, I think on a better day, I wouldn't I wouldn't dislike that as much as I do <laughs> right right now. Um, yeah, I get the feeling that you could be drinking like... You could be eating like those whiskey Tide Pods and you'd be like, this is disgusting. What? Or did you not see you can get whiskey in a capsule now? Why would you want to do that? I don't know. Banter. <laughs> whiskey capsules. I'm going to look this up. Yeah. Whiskey. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who it was that did it. Capsules. Uh, go ahead. Oh, live it, live it. Yeah. Tide Pod capsule. <sighs> don't eat the Tide Pods, kids. <laughs> what is wrong with them? What is wrong with the world? This Why would what happens... it do that? This is what happens when populists get in charge. Glenn Livett doesn't need to. I think that's kind of part of the banter. Yeah. I mean, they'll don't do it. Like just buy the whiskey, and drink it from a bottle. But the Glenn Livett, mind. Okay, so the Guardian doesn't like it, so maybe I do like it. <laughs> ah, but Forbes also likes it, so you know. Which way do Forbes lean? Billionaires. Um, yeah, that's right. Life hacker don't like it, and they're like scientists. I don't like scientists. ABC Seven Chicago are indifferent in their title. <laughs> I am looking at the news titles on the internet about this. Seaweed capsules. But it's not. Yeah, apparently it's seaweed. Oh right, is that what it's made of? Like the gel? Yeah, yeah. Gel? 
Yeah. Or gelatin. Uh, Seafood seaweed extract casings. Okay. I assume it's like the... Uh, I can't even think of the words, so I'm, not, I'm just going to shut up. It is a very hipstery kind of thing. Yeah, whiskey's hip now. Of course, we liked it before it was cool, so... Yeah, yeah. we're not hipsters. <laughs> we liked it before the hipsters. Right, I'm psyching myself up to finish this tasting off, so speak. Tasting, or the, you want up for the next whiskey? No, I haven't finished this one. Speak, oh, fill, right. fill the void, fill the void. Okay, I've finished that one. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, I thought it was pretty... Uh... I thought it was pretty decent, to be honest. Uh, it was, uh, the smoke wasn't at all like a medicinal PE overpowerment. It was more, it's like a velvety. It definitely sort of builds throughout, smoke. though. Yeah. It's nice Initially, though. light, spice, uh, peatiness builds from mid to finish. Uh, I don't peat- know that I got a. Floral smokiness from it, so I would say it was heavier rather than floral. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was a floral smokiness. That's what they've got in the card. Each to their owner. Yeah, I would say. What, what are you going to give that then? I'll probably give that like a three and a half. A three and a half? I'm going to give that a two. It's not the because worst score you've given. I think, on a, I think on a better day, if I wasn't still apparently affected by getting really drunk on whiskey months ago, um, I wouldn't dislike that too much. I'd give it a two and a half. Whereas that have one, no. Yeah. No. Just no. I, I, no. Well, hopefully, you quite like the next one. And I think I think the point that we have to get to is that I just don't like Swedish whiskey. Maybe. I've never had one that I like. Even the Apple Blom. It's just yeah. not for me. It's just because I mean they, they do smoky stuff. That's what they do. That's fine. They can knock themselves out. Literally, what they do. Yeah. For everything, though. Like, their food is all mm. smoked stuff. Mm-hmm. This part of their palate, though, isn't Like it? how Japanese whiskey tends to be lighter because their food tends to be lighter. Yeah. That's just how your palates are developed. That's fine. They're wrong, but that's yeah. fine. Um, have you have you managed to get through it yet? Yeah, yeah, it's done. Are you ready to move on, or do you need some more? Have we got anything else for, <laughs> to talk about? I don't know. You think we should have, because I haven't spoke to you in a while. We sort of talked at work, but uh, we think we should have more to talk about. But we both. The quite problem boring. is that our, what, the reason we haven't talked in a while is because we've been f- filling our time with work. Yeah, like I went out last week. My cousin was down, but nothing really happened. I just got drunk. So. Yeah, I went. I went out yesterday. Um, I had day. an Italian for lunch, and I had Italian for tea. Sounds like a good day. Oh, a cheat day. Um, yeah, and then I went to that pub, and I only had like a pint and a half, and then I was like, I can't drink anymore. Mm. It's just really knocked me off my alcohol game. I had more than a pint and a half. Yeah, you seem to have recovered a lot better than I did. Same with jeans in it, I'm Scottish. Well, you'd think I'm quite a Scottish and three quarters Yorkshire. You'd have thought I'd be pretty decent at getting back onto the alcohol train, but uh, both my parents both did the old. Uh... You know the genetics thing, and like my dad, who might be born in Yorkshire, his blood still came back like very Celtic, and my mum's was like ninety percent. So yeah, yeah, I can't compete with that. Well, alcoholism I, I of the Celts. I don't know if I can compete with that because I'm not done. Yeah, you never know. But well, I mean, when I was driving to the Lake District, we went through a town in Lancashire called Cowan Bridge. Huh? It's well, Lancashire. I mean, your surname is predominantly from, found in Lancashire. Comes from, yeah, but it comes. It's derived from Calhoun, Cal- right? Calhoun, yeah. yeah, which is the Lot Lomond name, and Lot Lomond was part of Dumbartonshire, which used to go as far down as like Blackpool. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Long row red. You ready? Are you the voice of this one? Uh, I believe I am because you just did the uh, Anak. However you pronounce it. Anak, apparently. Yeah, go on. Uh, Fire away. 
It's that aged 11 years, Pinot Noir cast matured. So, Long Row is the peated, twice distilled expression from the iconic Springbank distillery in Campbelltown. This red edition spent eight years in bourbon casks before moving into refill Pinot Noir bar- barricades from New Zealand, and it sold out some time back. This is a real gem, a ruby, we'd say. Chortle. I added the chortle. Yeah. Right. So, nose, creamy, red apples, homemade rhubarb crumble, lots of confectionery notes, red licorice, and mascherano cherries. Fancy cherries. Mascherano cherries, yeah. I like the, how this guy describes these Glenlivet Tide Pods, by the way. He's still on that. Yeah. He's put, this destroys the experience of tasting a good scotch. You can't nose it, you can't sip it, you can't fold your tongue and then flatten your tongue inside your mouth, exposing different flavour receptors. You can't break a bottle over someone's head. Ah, a glass Yeah, yeah, I like, yeah. <laughs> he's, he, yeah, I'm all right with him. I watched um, a zero punctuation uh, for, uh, what was it for? I can't even remember what game it was for, but you basically, oh, it was, the, the whole premise, though, was he was complaining about something and he was like, you don't go to Glasgow uh, to get smashed over the head by a bottle. Uh, and he was like, it was like, you don't go somewhere to do something. You don't go to Glasgow to get smacked over the head by a bottle. You go there for a uh, blank and to buy heroin, respectively. And I was like, ha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what's the nose that say? Uh, yeah, it says uh, creamy, red, creamy red apples, homemade rhubarb crumble with lots of confectionery notes, red licorice and mascara, maraschino cherries. Sorry. That's still quite smoky on the nose to me. I didn't really get any of it. It could just oh, be. yeah, it's there, it's there now, yeah. I think my nose is a bit burnt out. A little um, bit sweet. And then, yes. palette, we have delicate, soft and smooth. A perfect balance of Pinot Noir wine and long roll. Red fruits, raspberry jam and cranberry. This followed by burnt embers and tobacco leaf with hints of smoke. More uh, of the long roll characteristics, creamy, smoky sultanas and some nuttiness in their finish. Okay, so yeah, you get... That peaty, that you get that kind of sherried whiskey that we we know and love to begin, but then the peat comes in and just like kicks the door down on your taste buds straight through your happiness receptors, raising your bile. And so why do people put? Uh, why well, do they have to, to? Because you need a fuel to to heat up the room to dry out the stuff. It's just a just burn human effluent at this point. Just, just anything. I mean, but to be fair, some peat might contain one. One removing peat from peat bogs is really bad for the environment because it takes years for peat to kind of replenish. And yeah, two, peat it makes crap whiskey. So stop digging up peat. I don't That's know. I quite like this one. No, it's in the sort of um, gotta be gotta be solidarity. For me, this is in the Ben Romack. Sort of peatiness levels. Ah, uh, it's above that. Yeah, but it's not like stupid. Yeah, it's definitely stronger, but no, 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 no. I'm getting the tannins. I don't really care. Yeah, there's a little bit of tannins. I've realised there's a solid chance that I should just be like a dry red drinker and not whiskey drinker. Mm. Like I should just be cutting about drinking, what was it, Barolo or whatever. I don't know wines. I'm not as fancy as you, apparently. I researched what wines give tannin so I could try and find whiskies that are made in those casks. I'm not going to lie. I quite that like wasn't that. as bad, the second taste. That wasn't yeah. as bad. You got over it. Yeah, so sherry, sherry flavours to begin with peat building. But not overpowering. To be fair, it's not. And then... Like, if that wasn't sold out, I would consider buying it. Wow. It, like, but it is sold out, so I'm not considering. Well, you never know. Give it, put it in to... Send them an email. Retreat.com. Eh? I've been watching a lot of person of interest in the search tool on that. It's fetchingretrieve.com or something like that. All right. 
Personal um, interest isn't the one where two people hack at the same time, is it? That's NCIS. It's, it's the one where like you've got a billionaire dude who's like an expert hacker and he's got a machine that can predict terrorist attacks, but it also can see crimes happening, like predict crimes. Talk about Minority Report. Kind of, but it's just like it observes people through like CCTV and bank transactions. All your online stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then all the crime ones, it kind of files as not relevant because it's just there to stop terrorist attacks. All right. And he sold it to the government. uh, But then he felt bad the fact that all these, basically, he was getting all these social security numbers for people and he was finding out, like in the paper, like two weeks later, they were dead. Yeah. So he teams up with this ex special forces dude and they kind of, when they get a number, they try and save them and protect them. It's good. Protect terrorists? No, protect the victims. The not relevant oh. numbers. I no, see. it's not quite that controversial. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> sort of like leftist shows are you watching these days? <laughs> Just misunderstood. We've got plenty of buildings. <laughs> uh... To be fair, well, these days it's the right wing guys that are cutting about stabbing up police stations and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, but I always feel like the right wing guys are like a lot more bluster and a lot less action. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like they've got over it and they've started getting involved. Yeah, maybe. It's fine. There'll be like a gender war or something. Be a lot of sides in that one. Yeah. Um, what score would you give that then? I want to go to three and a half for that. Like at least you buy a bottle on a three and a half. You four, you're probably. Buy... All right. I say that consider. Yeah, but on a three and a half. It's just it's, it was the tannins break my brain. I'm going two and a half. It's still too peaty for me that one. I'm willing to hit four, I think actually. Because I typed four in and I'm not deleting it. Yeah. Oh, this has been a, tri- <laughs> a trial for me. This one. Well, we've got. A, a very small one to go, and I'm pretty sure it's not Peter. So I don't know if it says if it's Peter. It probably it's will Lock be. Lomond, so I doubt it. The thing, this is the thing with Lock Lomond, right? And and no offense to anyone listening who does Lock Lomond whiskey, but I always root for you guys because I'm from the not Ethically. really club. Yeah, yeah. My dad's side is from that region, and you're always kind of like, eh. Well, this is an autograph edition, so. So, come on, just make one that's not... Eh. Eh. You've expanded recently, you know. You've got a lot of investment. Let's just... Open up a gift shop. Start a cafe. You're next to Loch Lomond. It's really nice there. Yeah, make a whiskey donut, and I'm there. Eh. It's that simple. To be fair, I don't think there are distilleries on the banks. They could move it there. It would probably cost a lot of money, but it would be cool. It would be cool. They should put it, like... On the island in the middle. I was going to say on a barge. Island in the middle is cooler. Underneath, in a dome. Yeah. Remember when we were when I was first uh, talking about when we were first talking about starting Minecraft, and I was like, I want to build a dome underwater. Yeah. Then I realised how bad the water physics are, and I'm like, nope. My friend at work's doing that. What building a Minecraft dome underwater? Yeah. You just have to bucket away all the water from the top. You have to use a, you can use a sponge if you can get one. Never even seen one, so... Yeah, they're rare. All right, last one of the month until the next box, which is... next box comes out uh, in October. We'll probably drink it November, maybe February. early December. Right, and then we okay. get a Christmas box, which will be full of sherry whiskies, and everyone will be happy. Christmas Pete. <laughs> 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 it's warming because it tastes like fire. Santa didn't give you coal. Yeah. He gave you fucking peat. Yeah. Right. Loch Lomond, 1999 vintage. Paul Lowry autograph edition. Loch Lomond is a distillery is uniquely equipped to release whiskey gems owing to the startling array of spirit combinations it can produce from its lineup of four different stills. Most distillers just have one style of still. The Oxford distillery doesn't have to. Yorkshire. So does Avalor. Yeah. This is a special edition celebrating their 2018 golfing sponsorship of the Open. And Paul, I guess that's meant to be Lowry. Lowry, it says there. I don't know which one's right. Well, which one's, yeah, okay. So oh. Paul Lowry won it and they gave the autograph to Paul Lowry. It'll be Lowry, yeah. That's a bit unfair. Carnoustie win in 1999. 
tasting note. The uniquely fruity nature of Loch Lomond single malt combined with the American oak maturation provides deep aromas of honey, tropical fruits, hints of maple syrup and oak. Bottled at cast strength, 50.8% ABV, resulting in a rich mouthfeel and a deep and complex flavour, just as nature intended. Okie dokie. So do you get any of that? I'm nosing it first and we don't have a nosing note. We do not have a nosing note. All ten. What is... What? what does it smell like? It doesn't say. No, oh, but what do you think it smells like? It's hard to tell because I haven't been able to clean out my glass, so I'm still getting peat. It smells a bit like salted caramelly. It's like a chalky smell. I don't get chalky. Maybe my nose is dry. Yeah, my nose is pretty blocked still, so. Yeah, I'm not getting chalky. I don't know. I have no comments on the nose. I can't tell what it is. No, me neither. So it's not a particularly startling nose, anyway. So it's fruity, um, honey, tropical fruits, maple syrup and oak with a rich mouthfeel. Honey, tropical fruits, maple syrup and oak. A bit of spice. Yeah, maybe honey. The yeah, end the really dies. Spice the honey. It. What was that? The end, it dies a death. Yeah. You just... have like, yeah, you have like the honey and the spiciness kind of going and then it just goes... But you still got the, the maybe warmth. Maybe get oak. Yeah, you still get a, It's almost bitter at the end. I'm not getting any fruit. Cancels it out. Yeah. You still get the warmth. You still. It's not. It's not a sharp finish. You still got the finish, but it just suddenly goes a little bit bitter. I'm. I'm not sure. I'm sold on this one. I suppose Maybe. this is what happens when you mix whiskey and golf. Yeah. The best Scottish export with the worst. So what we're saying, honey, honey and light spice. Yeah. Bit of oak. Builds. Yeah. I'm afraid oak. I'm going to have to say oak background. they did not, not be. Yeah. Bitterness cancels out the finish. But warmth lingers. What will you say for that then? Yeah. As a response to our you're rooting for them but it's always a bit yeah. mm. that's where I'm at. I'm going to give it a three. I want a two and a half. I'm going to give it a three just because it's probably the most drinkable one of the box for me. I would take that long row one more. Yeah, all right, so long as it's got tannins in it, cancels everything else out. Yeah, it's basically like my favourite... My favourite My favorite tasting note is, oh, my mouth's dry. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like I didn't mean to say, oh, then? I meant to say, oh, but... Yeah. What was that? You should have liked the chalky smell then. You should have been like, yes, this will dry my mouth out. I was thinking, but then, nope. Yeah. That's probably why I gave it a little score. I was like... Disappointment. Mm. All right. It's not a low score either. It's just... Yeah. As I I said... Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Come on, Loch Lowland. Just stop mucking about with your four stills and nail something. Yeah, we're rooting for you. I live near you. If you were really good, I'd come up and come and visit your distillery you can't visit. <laughs> right. That is our whiskies of this podcast. I was yeah. going to say month, but it's a bit intermittent. Yeah. Our infrequent intermittent podcasts. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, after in the new year, yeah. we should hopefully return to a more. We'll reinvigorate the blog. I believe your work gets a little bit less busy after November, December time. Yes. So we'll and reinvigorate the blog. I we'll, will be finished. We'll try and reinvigorate that. this. It'll be good. Yeah, well, we'll do the next, the two remaining boxes this year. We've got a October one and a Christmas one. We'll get them yeah. done for podcasts, but probably can't promise any other content until content. That's <laughs> true. But, uh, yeah. But like, share and subscribe. Yep. As always. If you can just share it to one other person, you'll possibly double our uh, viewership. <laughs> so that'd yeah, be that'd nice. be great. Yeah, think of the power you wield. Yeah, if you can get two, you've basically made us a thing. Yeah, mum, if you could get my dad to listen. Yeah, that'd be I'll, great. I'll, I'll maybe even see about seeing if my parents will listen. <laughs> <laughs> they right. probably won't. They won't. <laughs> 
Well, that's that's it from us. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening, as always. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed, and we will speak again soon. Yep. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye.